Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Bible study today. We are in Psalm 6. Psalm 6, free PDF outline on our website at tobelikechrist.com. The author of Psalm 6 is once again King David, King of Israel and Judah. Now, in this chapter, we do have two references that I could find in the New Testament back to this psalm, back to Psalm 6. Those appear in Matthew chapter 7, verse 23, and Luke 13, 27. So if, you've ha if you have time after this study, go check out those verses and see how they relate in their context to what's going on in Psalm 6. One definition today, and it's the word sheol, which refers to kind of the blackness, the unknown of death. I like the way that Albert Barnes defines it in his commentary. It's maybe the best definition that I've seen that gives kind of the, the sense of the word. He says, quote, the idea which was conveyed by the word Sheol or Hades was not properly a grave or a sepulcher. So it's not like, it's not a tomb necessarily. It's not being buried in the ground, but he says, but that dark unknown state, including the grave, which constituted the dominion of the dead. Again, that's from Albert Barnes's commentary. Psalm 6 follows the familiar pattern that we've been introduced to and we'll see in, in future Psalms where the first part introduces a problem and then the second part is an expression of faith that God is going to come through and help with the problem. So our first section, verses 1 through 7, David's plea to God to withdraw his discipline. David was in distress and he suspected that this distress was a result of God's discipline on him for something that he had done. Now, we're not told specifics about what this was, what David's sin was, or what he thought it might be. From the end of the psalm, we learn that some of David's distress was the result of his enemies who were threatening him. So David's enemies are back for yet another psalm. <laughs> he inquired of the Lord how long this trouble was going to last, how long this discipline from the Lord was going to trouble him. He asked God not to punish him anymore because basically he had learned his lesson. He says that he was already greatly troubled, but he asked God to be gracious to him and help him. He was actually so worried about this that he was worried that his trouble was going to lead to his death. And he asked God to, or expresses his desire to stay on earth where he can continue to serve and to worship God. In verses six through seven, David talks about just how bad his distress had become. He said, I am weary with my moanings. Every night I flood my bed with tears. He soaks his bed because he cries so much. I drench my couch with weeping. My eye wastes away because of grief. It grows weak because of all of my foes. The last three verses, verses eight through 10, are our second section, David's confidence that God had heard his prayer. So in the last three verses, David moves from a mindset of despair to one of confidence. He calls on his enemies to withdraw from him because he knows that the Lord is gonna answer his prayers. And he states that all of his enemies are going, to be, are going to be put to shame because God is going to defeat them. And so that is Psalm 6. This expression of confidence at the end kind of leads us into our application section. And maybe we can take some application about the way that we can pray. So as David did, maybe it would be wise for us occasionally to end our prayers with an expression of confidence, stating that we know that God has heard us and that he's going to help us. You know, as Christians, we don't pray into the ether. We don't just pray out into the universe and, you know, hope someone hears it, hope God hears it. We have confidence that God hears our prayers. And the Bible actually tells us that he does. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 29, Solomon writes, The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayers of the righteous. And we have other verses in the Bible talking about how we should throw our cares upon God because God cares for us. And when we end our prayer with an expression of confidence, that statement is both a praise to God for being so good to us, and it's also a reminder to ourselves that God is actually listening, that these prayers actually make a difference. I think it's the book of James, don't quote me on that, it says the effective prayer of a righteous man avails much. It's meaningful, it's impactful, God hears it, his power moves when his saints pray. And so express that confidence as you conclude your prayers. That's probably something I need to do a better job at uh, also. So thanks for joining me today for Psalm 6, Lord willing, tomorrow, Psalm 7.